In the rolling hills and verdant forests of England's countryside, 1450 was a time of great change. The Black Death had ravaged the land, leaving many villages decimated and the social hierarchy shaken. Amidst this turmoil, two lives were forged in separate corners of the kingdom. Lady Amelia Fothergill resided at Ashwood Manor, a grand estate nestled between the Wiltshire Downs. She was the youngest daughter of Lord Thomas Fothergill, a wealthy merchant who had made his fortune trading wool and textiles. Amelia's life was one of luxury and comfort, with every whim catered to by her devoted parents. In contrast, Alexander Markham lived in nearby Trowbridge, working as an apprentice to the local blacksmith. His days were filled with hard labor, shaping hot metal into tools and horseshoes for the townspeople. Alexander's family had been blacksmiths for generations, but his own dreams lay elsewhere, in the world of letters and ideas. As fate would have it, Amelia's life was about to intersect with Alexander's in a most unexpected way. One crisp autumn morning, as Amelia rode her horse through the forest, she stumbled upon a group of men huddled around a makeshift forge. Among them was Alexander Markham, his face smudged with soot and sweat beading on his brow. Intrigued by the sight of this young blacksmith, Amelia dismounted her horse and approached him. Good morrow, sir, she said, her voice melodious and clear. I see you're hard at work. May I ask what you're crafting? Alexander looked up, startled, as he took in the vision before him. A beautiful young woman with porcelain skin and golden tresses, perched on horseback like a goddess from Olympus. It's just a simple horseshoe, milady, he replied, his voice roughened by years of working with hot metal. For the Lord's own steed, Amelia smiled, her eyes sparkling with curiosity. Ah, how fascinating. I've never seen anyone work such magic with molten steel. Might I watch? As Alexander demonstrated his craft, Amelia found herself captivated not only by his skill, but also by the spark of intelligence in his eyes. Little did she know that this chance encounter would set her life on a course of discovery and love. Over the next few weeks, Amelia returned to visit Alexander at his forge, learning about his craft and sharing stories of her own privileged life. As they talked, their conversations flowed effortlessly, like a gentle stream meandering through the countryside. They discovered shared passions for literature, music, and the beauty of nature. As autumn gave way to winter, Amelia found herself drawn to Alexander's humble yet vibrant world. She began to see beyond her own sheltered existence, sensing the richness that lay within his simple life. Alexander, in turn, was enchanted by Amelia's radiant spirit and the unbridled enthusiasm she brought to their conversations. As the snowflakes fell gently around them, they strolled through the forest, hands brushing against each other as they walked. It was then that Alexander realized he had fallen deeply in love with Lady Amelia Fothergill. However, not everyone was pleased about this blossoming romance. Lord Thomas Fothergill, Amelia's father, disapproved of Alexander's humble station and the disparity between their social classes. A blacksmith? Lord Thomas scoffed when Amelia mentioned her growing feelings for Alexander. He's a mere tradesman. You deserve someone with more. Substance. Emilia stood firm. But the seed of doubt had been planted in her mind. Was she truly suited to marry beneath her station? As she navigated this inner turmoil, Alexander faced his own fears. Would he be able to provide for Amelia's needs and comfort her in her privileged world? One fateful evening, as the snow-covered forest seemed to whisper secrets to them, Alexander took Amelia's hand and led her to a secluded clearing. In this moment of quiet intimacy, they faced their true feelings head on. Amelia, he said, his voice barely above a whisper, I know I'm not worthy of your love in the eyes of society, but if you'll have me, I swear to be your partner through every triumph and hardship. Together, we can build a life that's more than just station or wealth, one built on love and mutual respect. Tears streaming down her face, Amelia nodded resolutely. I choose you, Alexander Markham. Not for who you are as a blacksmith, but for who you are as a man, kind, intelligent, and true of heart.
In that moment, the universe seemed to pause, acknowledging their love as a beacon of hope in a world torn apart by conflict and inequality. As the seasons passed, Emilia and Alexander's bond grew stronger. They found creative ways to bridge the social divide between them, through art, literature, and shared passions. Lord Thomas Fothergill eventually came to accept Alexander, seeing the love that had blossomed in his daughter's eyes. One sunny afternoon, as they sat together on a hill overlooking Ashwood Manor, Emilia turned to Alexander with a smile. Will you be my husband? she asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Alexander took her hand, his eyes shining with happiness. I'll be your partner in every sense of the word, milady, now and forevermore. And so they sealed their love with a kiss as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden glow over the rolling hills of England's countryside. The end!